Hey guys, in this video, the brilliant Mr. B is going to be taking you through functions. Now this is a GCSE further maths video, but it could be used for lots and lots of different things. For example, as an introduction to A-level maths. Now there are a few different examples in this video. If you want more practice questions, then there are loads and loads of those just waiting for you over on my website. We are going to have a look at functions and really it's just another way to write algebra. So we have a look at our first function. The function of x is equal to x squared plus 9. And we've been asked to find the function of 3. So as you can see, with the way I've written this, all we're doing is we are swapping x with 3. So really, this is just substitution. So again, we have the function of x and I've swapped x with 3. So all we have to do is find every single time we find x and we're going to swap it with a 3. That gives us 3 squared plus 9. And now we've done our substitution, we can start to work this out. So 3 squared is 9, and we're adding 9 to it. So 9 plus 9 is 18, which is our final answer. So these first set of functions are just substitutions. It works exactly the same way as algebra substitution. Moving on to question 2. So the function of x is equal to x divided by 6, and then add 10. And we've been asked to find the function of 24. So again, all we are doing is we are swapping the x's with 24. So we find where x is, I write in 24 instead, and write the rest as it was. So divide by 6 and plus 10. And now we can work it out. So 24 divided by 6 is 4, and we're adding on 10. 4 plus 10 is 14. So again, it's substitution and it's nice and easy. The next question is a little bit more complicated, but follows the same method. So we have function of x is equal to x squared plus 12 all divided by 4. And we are being asked to find the function of x when it's equal to 7. Now you'll notice we haven't actually replaced the x in this. So it isn't going to be a substitution. So we have to rethink this actually. Now we'll notice that the function of x is equal to our algebraic expression and it's also equal to 7. So what we can do here is we can turn this into an equation. So if f of x is equal to 7, and that's including the f pair as well, so again, not a substitution, that means that 7 is equal to x squared plus 12 all over 4. So all we have to do is solve the equation. So I want to get x on its own. It's being squared. It's having 12 added to it. And it's all being divided by 4. Normally easier to get rid of fractions first. So let's multiply both sides by 4. That leaves me with 7 times 4 is 28. And then the divide by 4 and times 4 cancel out. Then I'm going to take away 12 from both sides. Usually easier to get rid of adds and takeaways fairly early on. 28 take away 12 is 16. And then the plus 12 take away 12 will cancel out. So 16 is equal to x squared. So now I need to take the square root of both sides to get rid of the squared symbol. That's going to leave me with a final answer of x is equal to 4, because the square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of x squared, square root and squareds cancel out. So the answer is 4. So we've done two questions, which are just substitutions, and now this one, it's just solving an equation. It's just that the way it's written is a little bit different. But again, spot that both of them, are f of x are equal to, so we can make them equal to each other and solve. Next, we're going to find inverse functions. So we have a function, function of x is equal to, and then we've got x plus 14 divided by 7, and we're taking the square root of all of that. So how do we find the inverse function? And the inverse is just notified by the little negative one there. That means we're going to find the inverse. So the way to do this is I'm just going to rub out the f of x, and we'll pretend that f of x is y and this is a y equals now if we rearrange this to be x equals then we'll have our inverse function so we're just going to rearrange it like we would rearrange an equation everything's being square rooted so the first thing to do is to square both sides that gives us y squared is equal to x plus 14 all over 7. usually easier to get rid of fractions 
So we'll get rid of big things that contain the entire sum first, and then we've got a fraction containing everything that's left. Let's divide by seven. Let's multiply both sides by seven. That gives us seven y squared is equal to x plus 14. So all we need to do now is take the 14 away from both sides. That gives us seven y squared take away 14 is equal to x. And now all we need to do is write this as a function. So for our final answer, the inverse function, so again using that minus one, inverse function of x is equal to, and then they're gonna write seven x squared minus 14. So at the end, I've just put the x back in, so I'm leaving the y's out now. So there is our final answer. So the method is pretend that f of x is y, rearrange it to make x a subject, then at the end, write out the expression you've got, but don't write y, write x instead. For the next question, again, we can see we're finding f of negative one, again, telling us we are finding the inverse function. So we're gonna pretend that f of x is y, and I'm gonna write y is equal to the square root of x minus 10, all divided by 11. So let's rearrange to make x be the subject. So again, first, get rid of things that kind of affect everything in your expression, and that divide by 11 certainly does. So let's multiply both sides by 11. That leaves us with 11y is equal to the square root of x minus 10. Now around the x, we're left with that giant square, um, square root symbol, and that's containing everything. Let's get rid of that next. So let's square both sides. That will leave us with, now we'd be curved here, all of this is being squared, so use brackets. It's not just the y that's being squared, the 11 will be squared as well. On the other side, the squared symbol, the square root will cancel out. And then all we need to do is um, add on 10 to both sides to finish off. That gives us 11y all squared plus 10 is equal to x. So when we write our final answer now, we're going to swap around the x and y again, and we can write the inverse function of x is equal to 11x all squared plus 10. One final thing you might want to do is you might actually want to get rid of the squared symbol and actually square those brackets. So then we could say, well, 11 squared is 121, x squared is x squared. We could also write it like this. Now, which one is simpler? Well, it's kind of a matter of opinion, I suppose. I guess we can leave it with the 11x in brackets, and we're going to be working with smaller coefficients, which might make any future work a little bit easier for us. But 121x squared plus 10 is also fine. Now, we have another inverse function. We have to find f to the power of negative 1. So it's an inverse function we're finding. This one looks a little bit more complicated. Let's use some more space. So we're going to have y is equal to 9x minus 5 all over 6x plus 2 and we need to rearrange so firstly let's get rid of the fraction and multiply both sides by 6x plus 2 and we can put that in brackets so it's just one operation we're making here that will leave us with we're going to have y multiplied by 6x plus 2 equals 9x minus 5 and the division is cancelled out with the multiplication that i made now we want x to be the subject here. So what do we need to do? Let's get all of the x's on one side. So why don't we take away the 9x? That gives us y, then 6x plus 2 in brackets, take away 9x equals negative 5. And I think a helpful thing here might be to expand the brackets. So I need some more space. Let's go up to the top, but we'll expand the brackets. So we're going to have six lots of xy plus 2y minus 9x equals negative 5. Now, since I want x on its own, what I need to do is to factorise anything I can that's got an x in. And we want x on the outside of a bracket. So the first thing to factorise is a 6xy. Now, we take an x out of that, we will have 6y left. The next thing to factorise is the negative 9x. And if we take x out of that, we'll have negative 9. Now, nothing else has an x in, so nothing else can be included in that factorization. What have we not done? We haven't used the plus 2y, and it's still equal to negative 5. So, we're nearly done now. What we want to do now is add the x on its own. Now, why don't we get rid of that plus 2y first? So, let's get rid of the plus 2y by taking away 2y, and we'll try and get all the y terms now over to the other side. So, we have x and 6y minus 9 in brackets, we didn't touch that, 
then on the other side of negative 5 and take away 2y. All that's left now is to divide that bracket away. So divide both sides by 6y minus 9. And again, to make this be one term, we need to put it in brackets. So dividing by the bracket has gotten rid of it on the left-hand side. But on the right-hand side, what's happened is if we need to divide by that, we can't really divide negative 5, take away 2y by it. What we can do is just leave the division where it is, but use a fraction to represent it. So we're dividing all of that side by 6y minus 9. And then actually, that's our final answer, because we now we've made x be the subject. So just to write it out properly now, the inverse function of x is equal to, so remember, make this in terms of x now, it'll be negative 5 minus 2x all over 6x minus nine so just read through the steps really curvily here and see what we did and try to see this, the kind of strategies we were using so it's always good to try and make it so it's not a fraction so that was my first step and then we needed x on its own and we had multiple x terms so we had to get them all on the same side and then try and factorize the x out of as many terms as we could once we've done that we just need to get everything over to the opposite side and we have our final answer, negative 5 take away 2x all over 6x minus 9. Next, we have composite functions. And this is where we use two functions at once. So we want to find fg of 4. So we need to use f of x and g of x together. Now, there's two ways to do this. The first way, if you have fg of 4, what you want to do is work away from the number. So work in this direction. That means we're going to do g first. And then we're going to do f second. So what we can do is we can find g of x, or in this case, g of 4. So g of 4, if g of x is 2x, g of 4 will be 2 times 4, which is 8. So we've done the first thing. We've done g of 4. Then we move on to the f. So if f of x is x divided by 4, what we find next is we find f of 8. So the answer to the previous function is carried over. So we're not finding f of 4, we're finding, we've done that, we're finding f of 8, a new answer. And that's going to be 8 divided by 4, which is 2. So in a composite function, you start with a function that's closest to substitution, so the g, because it's right next to the 4, and then we move outwards and we do the f second. So that's the first method. Let's just label this method 1. Now, with method two, method two isn't necessarily easier, but it might be that sometimes you're not asked to substitute and you're asked to write this as a single expression. So let's have a look at method two. So what we do in this case is it's very similar. We have f g of four. And again, we're going to be focusing on the kind of g first. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to substitute g into f. So to write out f g of x, what we do is we substitute g into f. So when we're writing out f of x, we're going to write x over 4. But instead of writing x down, we're going to write what g of x says, which is 2x. So when you're substituting, what you do is you substitute g into f, the letter that's closest to the number substituting into the one on the outside, and you replace the x with that function. Now let's see if we get the same answer. So we want to find f g of 4. So we need to replace the x with a 4. So that's 2 times 4 divided by 4, and that is equal to 2. So both ways give us the same answer. And again, while method 2 might be slightly conceptually a little bit more difficult, sometimes you might be asked to just write the expression, and it might be that 2x over 4 is actually the answer. So be careful what exactly the question is asking for. So for question two, we'll practice both methods. So let's do method one first. So I'm just going to write down a little one for method one. So we have g f of four. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to work from the f to the g. So we're going to substitute in for f first. So if f of x is equal to x cubed, then f of four is equal to four cubed. So 4 times 4 is 16, and the third 4 multiplied is going to give us 64. Then we move on to the g. g of x is equal to x plus 5. So g of 64, so again, it's not going to be g of 4. We've dealt with a 4, and now we've got 64 as our new answer and our new substitution. So it's 64 plus 5, which is 69. 
So 69 is our answer. Now remember, we've got method two as well. And I wanna show you both ways because sometimes you might be asked for the expression you find in the process of method two. So it's up to you which method you use. So again, we have G, F of four. So we're substituting the letter that's closer to the four into G. So to write down the expression G, F of X, I am gonna write down G, X. But when I write down G, X, which is x plus 5, I'm not just going to write x plus 5. The x is going to be swapped with f of x. And f of x is x cubed. So it'll be x plus 5, but the x has been swapped with x cubed. Now I've got that expression. I can work out g f of 4, and that's going to be 4 cubed plus 5. That's going to be 64 plus 5. And that still gives us an answer of 69. So you get exactly the same answer both ways. But again, you might be asked not to substitute, but to write down the expression gf of x, which was the x cubed plus 5. So it's, it's good to know both ways. So now for the final question, again, we'll look at method one first. We want to find fg of negative 5. So we're going to gg first, and then we're going to do f second. So if g of x is 7x, g of negative 5 is going to be 7 times negative 5, which is negative 35. Then we move on to f, f second. So if f of x is x squared, then f of, and again, it's going to be a new number, negative 35 is going to be negative 35. And all of that is going to be squared. And negative 35 multiplied by negative 35 is 1,225. So to write the expression f of g x, we write down the f expression first, which is x squared. But instead of writing x, we're going to replace the x with whatever g is. And g is 7x. So 7x in brackets with a squared symbol on the outside is our combined expression. And you might even want to expand the brackets and you've got to square both bits. So square the 7 and square the x. So 49x squared is probably a little bit simpler. So now we can substitute. So if we want to find f of g and it was negative 5, we swap x with negative 5. So that's to be 49 multiplied by negative 5 squared. I'll just use a little dot there just to show the multiplication. Uh, you can leave that off if you like. 49 brackets, negative 5, close the bracket, squared is fine as well. So what we need to do is do the brackets first. So we're squaring the brackets, which is 25. And then we are doing 25 times 49. And that gives us our 1,225. So we have the same answer.